So in this video, I'm going to be talking about what you guys keep asking me uh, advice on. <laughs> I get so many questions regarding this. Uh, what is the best lens for street photography and why do people use prime lenses and not zoom lenses? Uh, so yeah, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Before we do that, I just want to let you know, um, at the time of recording this, I've just announced F8 Magazine, which is a street photography magazine. So if you didn't see the announcement video on this, um, and head over to the, I'll put a link in the, in the corner, where's that, up there somewhere. Uh, I'll put a link up there, check that out, and jump over to F8 um, Magazine website and uh, let me know what you think. So it's, just, it's a subscription-based magazine featuring loads of different um, photographers all around the, around the world, part of the community. I don't want to show, reveal too much, I'm absolutely thrilled with it. So yeah, if you, if you missed out on F8 Magazine, do, uh, do jump over to the website and check that out. I'm super, super proud of that. So yeah, anyway lenses for street photography now if i give you one bit of advice for street photography and as as you guys have probably followed my channel since the beginning of my street photography journey you'll know i'm very new myself to street photography i've only probably been doing it um nearly nearly three years i say now um but one of the biggest bits of advice i could give you is to keep your camera simple so choose your camera choose your lens and master both of them master the camera know the weaknesses know the strengths choose the lens know the weakness know the strengths stick to it um, i find that with my street photography it's massively improved the more simple um, i can make the camera so for example we got as far as street photography goes you've got a couple of options you've got prime lenses or zoom lenses and then you've obviously got super zooms and stuff like that now i'm a massive adv advocate for a prime lens but um, what we'll do is we'll talk about the differences, why you would choose one over the other, and why I recommend prime uh, lenses. But just if you don't know, a prime lens is a prime lens is one of these. So a lens that doesn't zoom. So pretty much like your eye, um, you have to move your feet to get closer or further away from a, from a subject. So a prime lens is exactly that. They used to be better optically. Um, I think some lenses now, are, uh, some some zoom lenses now are just as good. Um, but you get um, much more low light. Um, they're better in low light basically because you can get like a much much wider aperture and stuff like that. This is a this is what's called a 50 mil equivalent on a full frame, so a nifty 50. So it's a very very popular lens for street photography. Um, the other option is a fixed lens camera. Now this is a prime lens as well, built into the Fujifilm X100V. This is my choice of camera, choice of weapon, if you will, for street photography. Absolutely adore this combination. Now this lens is a 35mm equivalent, so slightly wider than that, um, slightly wider than the 50mm. And both of these lenses are known to be close to the human eye so a lot of street photographers will use a prime lens such as a 35 or the 50 because they can get used to the field of view without actually having to put the camera to their eye so they they can literally even if they didn't have a camera with them they could sort of walk around the camera could be in the bag or whatever and they could see a composition and know exactly what the lens would give them they know know what the depth of field would be they know um, what the shutter speed would need to be they know everything about that lens and that camera setup because they're so familiar with it so one of the biggest advantages in my opinion with a prime lens is you get to know the lens so much easier so much much better uh, than you would a zoom lens so there's nothing to say obviously using a zoom lens you could use any camera any lens you could even use an iphone um, or um, a mobile phone on that if you think about it, a mobile phone, most mobile phones are actually prime lenses because obviously when you swipe left to open your camera, um, you're presented with a 24mm or a 28mm lens, I'm never sure which it is. Uh, and then you've got to physically zoom in using the, the, the digital zoom. So that's basically like starting off with a lens like this and then cropping it later in post. Um, that's basically, a, obviously some, some mobile phones have zoom lenses, separate lenses and stuff. but. Um, this lens here on my Fujifilm X-T3 is a 16 to 80. It's a kit lens, um, very, very good one. But it's, um, I'll tell you a bit of a story. I was shooting with the X-100V a couple of weeks ago in Bristol. Put a link up to that video so you can check that out. And I thought I'd give that half an hour to charge in the bag or an hour to charge. And I was filming with my X-T4, which I'm filming on now and had this lens, the 16 to 80, which is a 24 to 120 or 28 to 120, something like that. Um, zoom, brilliant, brilliant lens for, for landscape photography and stuff. And I thought, well, okay, I'll give, I'll give this combination a go. And straight away, I found myself, as soon as I seen a composition, I went like this, I thought, oh, I've got to get 35 mil, so, because I shoot 35 mil full frame 
on the Fujifilm that's 23 mil. So I've got to try and keep the, the lens at 23 mil. So as soon as I've seen something happen, and I'm obviously used to that field of view, um, I, 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 I missed a photograph straight away because I had to, I forgot I had to adjust my zoom. I had to adjust my, so if I'd have walked around with just on the 16 like it is now closed down completely and took some you know, shots like that, I would have had to go back to the computer and crop the life out of every single photograph because I'd have been too far away. And um, I like my vertical lines, if I've got doorways or buildings, I like them all to be square, uh, just the way I shoot. So a 16 mil lens isn't gonna work for me. It's gonna be really, really difficult for that. So again, it depends on the style of street photography you wanna do. But for me, I found that I had to constantly keep an eye on the, on the lens to make sure, make sure that I was at 35 mil. Um, and the other, the other problem I had um, was I seen a shot and I couldn't decide straight away whether to zoom in and pick out a detail, wait for somebody to walk in, or to, to, to stay wide and get some candid shots of people interacting in front of the camera. So it presented a few problems. It was almost like, it, although it gives you more flexibility, it actually added more confusion because I didn't know where I wanted the lens to be. You know, normally I would literally be there and what I see is what I get. I haven't got to think about it. Um, so yeah, the zoom lens, if you're starting off, is a really, really good place to start because you could go out and you could sort of leave your lens on a, on a, uh, a 35 equivalent or a 50 equivalent or a 75 equivalent and then come back and have a look at your pictures and think, oh, all the pictures I like are at this focal length or whatever. So for me, the zoom lens definitely is more of a hindrance than a help, uh, but that's just my opinion. I know a lot of people much, much prefer a zoom lens because it helps the way they shoot. Sometimes they might be going for a really, really wide, sometimes they might be wanting uh, more of a telephoto, but that's obviously, it comes with experience and it's, um, it's, it's going to be more specific to the way they shoot. For me, what I tend to, do, tend to do is get my camera set up, as I've mentioned at the beginning of many of my videos, literally put my camera at f8, so on a 35mm full frame f8, um, I'll set my shutter speed normally to about 500 of a second and then I use the histogram, so I use the ISO to make sure the histogram is pushed all the way to the right. Then all I've got to do, the camera then is fine, I don't have to change, providing the light doesn't change, provided I don't have to go in, so indoors or in shade or anything, all I've got to do then is think about, because um, I'm a back button fo uh, focuser, I don't actually focus on the shutter button, I focus on the back button uh, in manual. So I can pre-focus at 2 meters by pointing at the floor like that, or I can focus at infinity, like focus at a, bin, a building that's miles away or whatever, more than uh, more than sort of 10 meters away. And then the camera then is completely ready for me to focus, uh, ready to fo photograph something that happens. If I see somebody walking towards me, I think they look really cool. I want to get them sharp and they're, you know, less than two meters away. I can literally point at the floor and go three, two, one, bang. And, and the camera hasn't got to try and focus. It hasn't got to change its camera settings. I'm not going to look at the, the camera and think, oh, I've missed focus or that's too blurry because I haven't got the shutter right. So I've got complete control. And the good thing about a 35 mil lens is that depth of field, especially on a crop sensor camera like the Fujifilm um, cameras, the X100 range and the XT, the XT range. Um, because of a crop sensor camera, the depth of field is massive. So I can focus at infinity and then anything that's happening all the way up to about three meters in front of the camera, I don't need to worry about focusing. Okay, so 35 mil allows me to have a tremendous depth of field. Um, you know, if I went on to a 50 mil, I'm not going to get quite as much depth of field as a world of the 35. And then obviously using the zoom lens, if I was on uh, its widest setting, if I was on its widest uh, field of view, 16 mil, at f4, f2.8, I would get massive de depth of field. But as soon as I zoomed in, even at f8 or f11, the depth of field at 120 mil is going to be next to nothing. So zone focusing, which a lot of street photographers like to do because it's instant, they can predict what's going to happen, you know, they, they know they're not going to miss focusing, is, is almost impossible to do on a zoom lens because by the time you've moved the zoom, you've got to be careful where, where you go. You, if you go above, say, 35, you're not going to get zone focusing accurate at all. So um, you're relying then on autofocus with a zoom lens. You're relying on being able to see, capture the, sh the shot, focus it and, 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 and not miss it before it's all happened. So for me, um, that's why I love the 35 mil because I've got, I've got complete control over it. Again, as I said at the beginning, whatever you choose to, to use, learn it and master it. Well, because I've been using the 35 mil field of view for 18 years in, for weddings, events, that sort of thing, commercial things, um, 
doesn't matter what camera I put to my eye, any brand, doesn't matter what, with a 35 mil lens on it, before I even put the camera to my eye, I know exactly what my depth of field is gonna be, I know what my field of view is gonna be, I know what the slower shutter I can use is gonna be, I know what, you know, how all of its strengths and weaknesses. So for me, keeping a 35 mil at f8, and with a shutter speed at 500 or in there, just that way of thinking makes my street photography more about what I see in front of me, what's in the environment, more so than the camera. Because the last thing you want with street photography is to be thinking about your camera. You want your camera to be ready to go. As soon as you see something, bang, got it. You don't want it to be thinking, oh, it's misfocused or it's gone the, it used the wrong ISO because something's you know, black and it shouldn't be. You know, so with, with me, a prime lens just gives me that absolute control and wherever I put my feet, I've got my, my per peripheral vision, I call it. So peripheral vision, I've got what I see with my human eye is about the same, um, it's a bit wider than a human, a human eye. I think human eye is about 45 millimeters, 40 to 45 millimeters. So somewhere between the two of these is a, hum is a human eye field of view. So without even having the camera to my eye, I can stand there and go, yep, three, two, one, bang, got it. And I, I know that I've got, I know what's gonna be in my frame because I'm used to that field of view. If I had a zoom lens, and that was gonna happen, I would be thinking, right, where do I need to be? I need to be about there. Okay, three, two, one, go. And then you look at it and think, ah, oh, I've cropped that off. Because you're not used to, it's difficult to master that. It's difficult to master where, you, where you're gonna be. So with things like landscape photography, that's absolutely fine because you can fine tune your composition. You can fine tune where you want the lens to be because you've got all the time in the world. But with street photography, because you want your camera settings and everything ready. So when something happens in front of you, you could just go bang and you've got 100% confidence in your camera and your settings and your lens that you've got your depth of field, that you've got full control basically. So you're not getting back to the computer and thinking, oh no, I've cropped that off, I was too close, I was too far away, I wish I'd stood further back. And it just makes it all so much more simple. Um, so for me, biggest piece of advice I could give anybody, doesn't matter if you use your iPhone or a camera, it's just stick to one lens. And if that can be a prime, then ideal. As I said, as a learner, you might want to go out with a zoom and just see where you are, what works for you. But when you get a bit more experienced, or if you find that you know that you only like a certain type of street photography, you want the candid, what's going on around you. Um, some, some famous street photographers literally stuck with really wide angle shots and wait for something to come really close to the lens. And they would, their style was that distorted fisheye almost look so um, that they would never dream of using a, a zoom lens because anything above, say, 16 mil to them wasn't going to give them the look they wanted. So again, for them, a prime lens was vital. Uh, but for me, I love, I love my 35 mil. The other reason a 35 mil for me over a zoom is I can walk around with this. I like can see I can hold it with two fingers. It's no, it doesn't weigh anything. I can walk around with this all day. And street photography, quite often, you can. I mean, probably the longest I've ever walked in a day is about 12 mile. Um, yeah, hell of a lot. <laughs> in fact, no, photo 24, 24 hours in London. We walked around London up for 24 hours. That was a long, that was probably about 24 miles. Um, so having a small lightweight camera, uh, almost pocketable, like some of the people love the Ricoh GRs because they just fit in your pocket, um, makes street photography so much, much, much easier because you're not carrying, I mean, that thing, it's at least double the weight <laughs> as much as I love this camera and um, it's at least double the weight so yeah for me I can have this on a wrist strap I can walk around with it and um, it doesn't it doesn't mean I want to put it in my bag all the time because it's too heavy if I did that I'd miss out on some photographs so yeah I can have a wrist strap on it walk around and it literally doesn't bother me so really really love having a small lightweight camera and lens um, for street photography so the, the the prime lens is is I mean you can get this is obviously a pancake lens, but you can get the 35 mil, which is about that size. You can also get 35 mil a lot smaller for different cameras as well. So um, yeah, pancake lenses are a really, really good option to make you, your camera smaller and lighter. But whatever it is, as I said, I can't stress how important it is, literally learn the strengths and weaknesses, the field of view, get used to everything. So even if you didn't have your camera with you, you'd say, if I stood here, this is exactly what I'd get without needing to put the camera to your eye, you know exactly what field of view you're gonna get. And as I said, with a zoom lens, you're never gonna be able to do that. Well, you would, but you would take a lot longer to master. It'd take a lot longer. So even for weddings, I always prefer um, 
at two prime lenses because I put myself in the right position. If something happens in the distance, I've got my 75 equivalent lens, the 50 f2 on the Fuji. Um, so yeah, I, I much prefer a 35 and a 50 for weddings and events as well. So yeah, I hope that helps. Um, I, I wanted to touch on actually um, super zooms. So when people are new to street photography, it's very, very tempting to pick up a massive telephoto lens and, and pick out details and you haven't got to, you, you, you're not going to get noticed so much, I don't suppose, because you could stand in a, sit in a coffee shop and get people as they walk by. But A, I think that's cheating. <laughs> this is just my opinion. Feel free to disagree. Um, also, I think when you go above 100 mil, street, it doesn't, it's no longer street photography. I think it's more either documentary photography or portraits. I think you're, you're definitely going to struggle to get depth of field at the, 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 that focal length above 100 mil. We're talking full frame now, of course. Um, so for me, that, that, the, the, law, the line of street photography has to stop somewhere and, and for me it's about 75 mil. I think if you go over that you're, you're in documentary photography, which is nothing wrong with that. It's just that you're, it's difficult for it not to be a portrait. You've got to be extremely far away. And also I think if you're seen standing there with a massive lens, it doesn't, it, I wouldn't be able to do it. I wouldn't feel right. I w I'd feel like people are thinking, well, what's he looking at with that? You know, it looks a bit shifty. Uh, and also the, the, being able to walk around all day with a massive 400 mil lens, I don't know how people do it. <laughs> um, but I know people do, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just for my opinion, I think once you go above, I'd say once you go above 75 mil, for, for, for me, that's no, longer, that's no longer a street photography lens. I think that's more of a, a documentary style portrait lens, you know? Um, the one drawback I'll say for the 35 mil, as I mentioned portraits, is I don't like doing close-up-ish portraits with the 35 mil. For me, it has to be at least the 50 mil. So the one drawback with the 35 mil is that if I try and do any portraits on the street, I have to get a bit more um, around the subject because otherwise it doesn't work. I just don't like how, when you get close to, to people with, with, a, with a, it's not a wide angle lens, um, but it's slightly too wide. It's wider than the human eye. Uh, when you get close to people, you start to get a bit of a distortion. So that's the only drawback for me with the 35 mil. I, um, that I would say the 50 mil and above is, is better. But yeah, you can carry primes around with you, I guess. But yeah, so I will leave you there. I hope that's been helpful. Um, for me, I always shoot a prime, as I said, over a zoom. It just adds too much confusion. And as I said, I can't stress how important it is when you're out with your camera to own your settings. I'm a fully manual shooter, manual shutter, manual exposure, manual aperture, manual ISO, manual focus. And as I said, I focus using the back button there, either two meters in front of the camera or infinity, so that I know I've got complete control and I know exactly what the images are gonna come out like. Uh, and obviously knowing the lens is a massive, massive, um, important factor in that um, but yeah definitely learn 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 whatever camera you're going to use learn it master it know the strengths and weaknesses learn the lens know its strengths and weaknesses which sh the, the slower shutter you can use the, the way your depth of field limits are and stuff like that um, and even weather sealing things like that weather sealing is important now so um, yeah and uh, yeah keep it candid uh, and keep it interesting make sure your photo of your street photography is candid and interesting um, but yeah, hope that's helpful and I'll see you again soon. Um, yeah, if you haven't already, as I said, jump over to F8 magazine. I'll put a link in the description. Super proud of that. Limited copies on that. So if you, by, by the time you've seen this, if they haven't sold out. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Hit the subscribe button and, uh, and all that. You know what to do. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.